Recently, this picture came across on my Facebook wall. It's a picture of two cartoon dogs, one in a Confederate flag saying, I'd take a bullet for my country, and the second, a nurse saying, you won't even take a needle for your neighbors, sit down. It was obviously a message about vaccine, or COVID-19 vaccine to be specific. And following this picture came a, a lot of discussion about the safety of the vaccine. And finally, this post on the right-hand side with a list of names came up. And of course, this post has a lot of famous people in it. Uh, I see there is Dr. John Ioannidis, one of the most cited epidemiologists in the world. There is Dr. Carrie Mullis, a Nobel Prize winner and purportedly inventor of the PCR, and he is not the inventor of the PCR. Um, and then there is uh, there are two Nobel Prize winners, actually, including Kyrie Mullis. So this made me think about data and information. And it made me think about data and information in the time of COVID and coronavirus, 19 virus, the pandemic. I think about data a lot. My name is Kanshukan Rajaratnam. I'm the director for the School for Data Science and Computational Thinking at Stellenbosch University. When the list of these names came up, I was wondering whether these names were really saying, uh, or these people were really saying that the vaccine was bad or not. So I decided to do some research on these names. So the first person I looked at was John Ioannidis, who the poster says is the most cited epidemiologist in the world. So I searched for Professor or Dr. John Ioannidis on, on Google Scholar under clinical epidemiology, and I saw, oh, he is the most cited clinical epidemiologist in the world with 360,000, 66,000 uh, citation, which is obviously very impressive. But then I thought, Wait a minute, clinical epidemiology sits under the umbrella of general you know, epidemiology. So I searched under epidemiology instead, and I saw that Yako Tomil Eto was the most cited epidemiologist in the world, according to Google Scholar at least. And in fact, Dr. Uh, John Ioannidis would have been the third most cited epidemiologist uh, in the, under the umbrella of epidemiology, uh, but he is not listed here. And he's just a little bit higher than Dr. Graham Calders. So well, the poster might have posted John Ioannidis as the most cited epidemiologist, uh, you know, meaning that he's the most cited clinical epidemiologist, or maybe just to say, well, he's very well achieved. And of course, he's very well achieved. Uh, and so, but he is not the most, clinic, uh, most cited epidemiologist in the world. So I went to the uh, second name, and I'm now going to cherry pick a name for time constraints. So the next name I looked at was Carrie Mullis. And Carrie Mullis uh, is a Nobel Prize winner who was recognized for the in invention of the polymerase chain reaction technique, which is the test used, uh, testing method used to test for coronavirus, as well as a lot of other viruses. But what is interesting is that John Ma Carrie Mullis passed away on the 7th of August 2019, way before co the novel coronavirus was, uh, was discovered or, or, or sequenced. And, and way before the PCR test was uh, invented or, or, or modified for the coronavirus 19, and way before the vaccine was invented for coronavirus 19. So of course, he could not have a stance on the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, but if I looked at the search, uh, the first search that came up as inventor of method used to test for COVID-19 didn't say something by Reuters. And of course, if you go into the article, he had not said anything about coronavirus, and Reuters show that. So there's a lot of misinformation that has been happening during COVID-19. For example, this picture and this list of names. Uh, and, and during this pandemic, we've seen a rise in the number of uh, keyboard warriors, uh, data scientists, bioinformaticians, virologists, et cetera. And they all seem to give one or the other side of the argument, and they all seem believable. So how are we as a population supposed to decide which information is accurate and which information is not accurate? So this made me think also about how do people out there figure out if some data is accurate or not, right? So there are three ways I think one should look at. One is looking at the numbers, one, to look at the race versus the absolute value. So if you look at the rates, uh, which is a proportion of, uh, for example, the people who have been vaccinated or who have died out of the people who have been vaccinated versus the proportion of people who have died out of the people who have not vaccinated, that will tell you more information than the number of people who have died. Because of course, if the whole world gets vaccinated, then th due to breakthrough infection, only the vaccinated will die because there are no unvaccinated people, so in the extreme.
right? And, and similarly, uh, it's, so it's better to look at race than absolute value. Secondly, of course, because we have access to data and access to the internet, one could do their own research and look to see what the experts are saying. Finally, we all have access to experts like we've never had before. So we could listen to the best out there in the world and see their argument for the vaccine or against the vaccine and make that decision for ourselves. We at the School for Data Science and Computational Thinking and at Stellenbosch University in general have been doing our part. For example, uh, Professor Tulio de Oliveira, one of the finest bioinformaticians in the world, he wrote this article, South African scientists who discovered new COVID-19 variants share what they know. Uh, both Professor Eugene Kluter and I wrote data in the tight uh, fund COVID-19, how Hafas the crane is of PAD. And then, of course, the Professor Wolfgang Preiser, the head of the Division of Medical Virology at Stellenbosch University, wrote this article here. We are doing, trying to do our part to bring our knowledge to, to the public out there. And we, we ask the public to look at the various uh, arguments put on both sides of the vaccine and make a decision for yourself, rather than to live, for example, in an echo chamber of fake news. Thank you.